I'm here with epidemiologist Bonnie Specker from South Dakota State University, who is going to be providing us with a mini lesson today about health system capacity thresholds, and also give us an update on everything that's been happening with COVID-19 over the last week in our area, in the state, nationally, and in the world. So Bonnie, what do you have for us today? Yes, I'm gonna talk, as Chelsea said, about the health system capacity. The World Health Organization uses three criteria for considering whether or not public health and social measures um, should be considered when adjusting for COVID. The first one's epidemiology, the second one's health system capacity, which I'll talk about today, and the third one is public health surveillance. And Brookings makes use of one indicator in each of these three criteria for their thresholds that are done each week. One of the seven criteria for the health system capacity is that data are available to evaluate whether or not a health system can absorb or expand to cope with at least a 20% um, increase in COVID cases. And this would indicate that the system would be sustainable even if there's a surge in cases. And one thing is how do you determine what that potential caseload is? Um, this is just a graph of the Brookings cases as of yesterday, October 18th. And there were two ways or two things that we thought we could look at. One of them is the total number of cases in the previous seven days and then also the number of active cases. And we've just started including that active case because when you have such a big increase like you do right here, you can actually have a lot more active cases than you do total number of cases in the previous seven days. And you should consider that when coming up with these thresholds. So we estimate the number of hospitalizations in two different ways. We take the number of cases, both the previous week and the active cases, we do it for both of those numbers, and we, we can multiply them either times the overall state hospitalization rate, which we have for October 15th, which was 6.4%, or we can multiply, come up with some state age-specific hospitalization rates. And I just wanna show people how we do that. Um, this is a common thing to do in epidemiology to adjust for uh, looking at things with, that might have, be very strongly associated with age. On October 15th, the overall state hospitalization rate was 6.4%. And there were 202 cases in the past seven days as of October 16th. So if we multiply those 202 by 6.4% or 0.064, we come up with 13. So that's an expected number of hospitalizations based on the number of cases in the past seven days using the overall hospitalization rate. If we calculate it based on the active cases, which was 261 on October 16th, we come up with an estimated cases or hospitalizations of 17. But hospitalization rates vary significantly by age. And this is one of the graphs that's in the daily update. Um, but you can see here that if you have COVID and you're 80 plus years of age, 29.5% of those individuals will be hospitalized. But down here, if you're 30 to 39 years of age, only 3% of the cases are gonna be hospitalized. And this is South Dakota data. So these are estimates of hospitalization rates based on what we know to date. Now, if we look at the age distribution of recent cases, that also varies. So these, this is the age distribution of the Brookings County cases between October 2nd and October 14th. That's the last group that we know what their age distribution was. That graph is also in the daily report. But you can see that 28.8% of Brookings population or of their cases 
were between 20 and 29 years of age. Now here I'm just showing the last three age groups. You know, there's eight different age groups. The, gra the table gets kind of complicated. But if I look at the age group here, 60 to 69, they represented 10.5% of the cases between October 2nd and October 14th. If I multiply that 10.5% by the number of cases that have been diagnosed in the past week, I come up with 21. Now, the age-specific hospitalization rate from that previous graph I showed you for this age group is 11.9%. So now I multiply 11.9% times 21, the number of cases, and this is how many expected hospitalizations are for that particular age group. So we do this for each of the eight different age groups and then sum up this last column and we come up with a total of 17 hospitalizations based on that age adjusted um, rate. And then we do the exact same thing for the current number of active cases, which is 261 as of the 16th. So here we, we change this 202 to 261 and we recalculate that whole table. And there we come up with 22 anticipated hospitalizations in the next couple of weeks. So then we summarize all the different calculations we've done. This, these are the numbers based on the overall hospitalization rate. These are the numbers based on the age-adjusted hospitalization rates. And this row is the number of cases in the past seven days. And this row is the number of active cases. And then these numbers in parentheses is that with the extra 20% added on that the WHO recommends. So you can kind of see that they're sort of in the same ballpark, you know, expecting 13 to 22 hospitalizations within the next couple of weeks. So we do this table, the committee reviews it, we discuss it, um, then we provide this information to the health systems and let them determine whether or not their systems can cope with these additional numbers based on the current number of hospitalized patients and their census. Now, in the past, we've always, answered this question, is the health system able to cope with the resurgence of COVID cases that may arise from adapting some measure? And we've always answered that, yes, you know, they, they can survive. This past week was the first time we put yes, probably. And the health system felt that that probably was important. And the reason is, the health of the providers is actually playing a role in that probably. Um, you know, when they start getting sick, there's no one there to cover those hospital beds. So we really need to keep the healthcare workers healthy. And we're going to do that by following public health recommendations, you know, wearing a mask, socially distancing, practicing good hygiene. So it's really important that we do that so that we don't exceed those th that threshold on capacity. 